Attention all EV enthusiasts. Tesla has just dropped a bombshell that's set to shake up the industry. Tesla CEO Elon Musk revealed that the company would be creating an electric vehicle engine that uses permanent magnets without any rare earth elements. This is a significant development as rare earth elements can cause supply chain issues, with China producing the vast majority of the world's supply. While this news is undoubtedly exciting, it also raises some big questions. What will replace the rare earth elements in this new motor? And will this have any impact on its performance and durability? Furthermore, what is silicon carbide and how does it contribute to electric vehicle performance? With Tesla at the forefront of the electric vehicle revolution, it's essential to stay tuned and learn all about these exciting developments. So let's dive into the world of electric vehicle technology and discover what the future holds. During Tesla's investor day, Tesla made an announcement that they are developing a new powertrain which will reduce the use of silicon carbide, SIC, in lower-end electric vehicles by 75%. While this is great news for the electric vehicle market due to SIC's high power efficiency, ability to reduce voltage and current losses, decrease motor size and weight, and enhance thermal efficiency, it has also raised concerns about the future of SIC in the EV market. SIC has emerged as a potential alternative for EVs, and with other manufacturers potentially reducing their use of SIC in their EVs, Tesla's announcement could negatively impact the SIC market. What are the other announcements that Tesla has made, and why has SIC become a viable choice for EVs? Could this generate upheaval in the SIC market? Let's talk about it. SIC is a great power option for engineers because it is nearly five times stronger in thermal conductivity, has 10 times higher breakdown voltage, and three times wider band gap compared to ordinary silicone technology. While SIC has been around for a while, it has only recently experienced an acceleration in its development. Older technologies like insulated gate bipolar transistors face several difficulties that make them challenging to use as the power requirements of DC systems continue to rise. Also, SIC devices are well-suited for high-voltage and high-power applications due to their features. SIC also works better at higher switching frequencies, which aids in reducing the size of passives such as inductors, leading to a reduction in the weight of devices such as power converters. As a result, SIC devices have become popular among EV producers, particularly for more powerful motors, increased vehicle range, and the ability to use higher DC voltages that minimize power losses in cables and facilitate faster charging. The recent declaration of a 75% reduction in SIC material may sound concerning, but there are numerous plausible explanations for it. It could be due to severe declines in market demand or a shift towards more sophisticated system designs with greater levels of integration. In fact, Tesla is investigating a highly integrated inverter design that decreases the use of dye from 48 to 12, which may allude to the 75% reduction. However, if each dye needs to be larger in size to handle higher powers, there would not be the same aggressive decrease in SIC material. Nonetheless, SIC remains the best choice in the market for high power and high voltage rating devices, and other OEMs will continue to use it in 800 volt vehicles in 2023 to 24. In addition to this, Tesla has been working on a new entry level vehicle, a smaller car with fewer amenities that will not require as much SIC content to power it as a Model 2 or Model Q, which will be less expensive and more compact than its current models. However, the company's current models will probably maintain the same layout and require a sizable amount of SIC overall, despite its many advantages. Despite the many advantages of using silicon carbide in electric vehicle inverters, it is still a costly material, and many OEMs have expressed a desire for price reductions. With Tesla, the biggest OEM in this market, calling for more affordable solutions, it is expected that IDM, integrated device manufacturers, will face pressure to cut costs. To achieve cost reductions, IDMs may employ various tactics, such as procuring substrates from numerous suppliers, enhancing capacity for volume scaling, and switching to wafers with a larger width. The players in the supply chain in this industry are probably going to have a faster learning curve as a result of the increased pressure. If silicon carbide becomes more accessible not just to other automotive companies, but to users of other applications, its acceptance might be further boosted by the cost-cutting effort. 
In scenario three, silicon carbide replacement with other materials is a possibility. As of 2023, silicone IGBT, insulated gate bipolar transistor, is being used in EV inverters and is well positioned within the industry in terms of capacity and price. Manufacturers are still working to improve performance, and this substrate might have applications in the lower power devices stated in scenario two, where it might make scaling up to huge volumes easier. Perhaps silicon carbide will only be used in Tesla's most sophisticated and powerful automobiles. However, analysts believe that this is more of a long-term consideration than a five-year inverter. Gallium nitride on silicone exhibits great promise inside the automobile business, but it is unlikely that Tesla will ever transition to a material that is far more recent and less well-established than silicon carbide due to its need for cheaper costs and high-volume scale-up. Is it possible for Tesla to take a risk in an effort to use this novel material? First time will only tell. As for the potential replacements for rare earth elements for permanent magnets, a novel method of making a potential substitute for rare earth magnets has been developed by University of Cambridge researchers. Tetratinite, a cosmic magnet that naturally forms in meteorites over millions of years, has been discovered to be a viable replacement for rare earth magnets. According to researchers from the University of Cambridge and their Austrian counterparts, the utilization of the common element phosphorus by the researcher will replace previous attempts to create tetratinite in the lab, which relied on radical and unworkable procedures. Tetratinite can be manufactured artificially and on a large scale using phosphorus without the need for costly or specialized procedures. A supply of powerful magnets is required to create a zero carbon economy, and the greatest permanent magnets currently on the market are composed of rare earth elements. Due to China's dominance over the majority of the world's production, there is a problem with securing the consistent supply of rare earths. Although there are other nations that mine rare earths, including Australia, the current supply of rare earth elements may be in jeopardy due to rising geopolitical tensions with China. Rare earth reserves do exist elsewhere, but mining processes are quite disruptive since you need to remove a lot of material to acquire a small amount of rare earths. According to Professor Lindsey Greer from the Department of Materials Science and Metallurgy at Cambridge, there has been an urgent search for alternative materials that do not require rare earths. However, what problems are there right now with the manufacture of tetratinite? The journal Advanced Science has published an article titled Direct Formation of Hard Magnetic Tetratinite in Bulk Alloy Castings, and a patent application for the technique has been submitted by Cambridge Enterprise, the university's commercialization unit, and the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Tetrotainite is a real mouthful of a word, but it's a fascinating material with impressive magnetic properties. It's an iron-nickel alloy with a highly organized atomic structure that makes it an excellent substitute for permanent magnets. But here's the catch. Tetratinite takes millions of years to form naturally. That's right, millions of years. So scientists have been trying to create tetratinite synthetically for decades, but they've always fallen short. That is until now. A group of researchers from the Austrian Academy of Sciences, the Montana Universitat in Loben, and Cambridge University has discovered a feasible substitute for making tetratinite that doesn't require waiting for millions of years or bombarding alloys with neutrons. The key element? Phosphorus. Yes, the element found in meteorites. The team discovered that iron-nickel alloys containing trace amounts of phosphorus have a dendritic growth structure that allows for the ordered stacking of iron and nickel atoms, resulting in tetratinite. By combining iron, nickel, and phosphorus in the right proportions, the researchers were able to speed up the synthesis of tetratinite by a whopping 11 to 15 orders of magnitude. What's even more amazing is that creating tetratinite doesn't require any special techniques. You can make it by simply melting the alloy and pouring it into a mold. This discovery could revolutionize the way we perceive the subject. And it's not just a matter of academic interest. The researchers hope to work with significant magnet producers to determine whether tetratinite can be used to make high-performance magnets. If it can, it could have significant implications for everything from electric cars to medical devices. Speaking of electric cars, Tesla's Model 3 is the first Tesla vehicle to use an integrated permanent magnet synchronous motor, while the Model S and Model X use induction motors. 
The Model 3 employs a different type of motor that uses permanent magnets to create the magnetic field. The result is a more efficient motor that delivers better performance and range. Let's take a closer look at the permanent magnet motor that powers the Tesla Model 3. This type of motor is known as an AC asynchronous motor and is made up of two main components, the stator and the rotor. The stator core is typically made of laminated silicon steel sheets with slots where thick copper wire coils are inserted. When these coils are energized, they produce a magnetic field that, when combined with a three-phase alternating current, creates a spinning magnetic field. The conductive rod on the rotor can be thought of as a wire that cuts the magnetic line of induction, generating an induced electromotive force. As the stator's magnetic field spins, it creates an electromagnetic field that surrounds the rotor and transforms electrical energy into mechanical energy. However, there will always be a discrepancy between the rotor's speed and the magnetic field's rotational speed, because the rotor is constantly chasing the rotation of the stator's magnetic field. There are two types of motors commonly used in electric vehicles, AC asynchronous motors and permanent magnet synchronous motors. The latter has a very similar design to AC asynchronous motors, with the addition of a rotor made of permanent magnets. The magnetic field rotating on the stator of the permanent magnet synchronous motor attracts the constant magnetic field rotating on the rotor, and their rotational speeds coincide. Permanent magnet synchronous motors offer several benefits, including low energy consumption, high energy conversion efficiency, and high power density. However, the cost of adding permanent magnets can raise the overall cost of the motor. In addition, demagnetization can be a problem in high temperature and vibration situations. Despite these potential drawbacks, permanent magnet motors are used in the Tesla Model 3 to increase energy efficiency and lengthen battery life. Since the Model 3's body is smaller than the Model S's, even if a higher energy density battery is used, the total energy is still lower. Therefore, the battery life must be extended by increasing efficiency, which the permanent magnet motor helps achieve. What are your thoughts on Elon Musk's recent announcement of a rare earth-free Tesla motor? Do you think this will have a significant impact on the electric vehicle industry and the production of sustainable technologies? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. Also, if you're a fan of all things technology, be sure to check out this other video we've got lined up for you. It's packed with all the latest news, tips, and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve.